Oh, Bill Henshaw here again for the Constitutional Crisis Channel. This will be a little kind of a short snippet today, but on an important issue, which is what happens all too frequently to the victims in traffic court and even criminal courts. Because you go in there, and of course, you know, the obvious thing that you want to do by nature is to go in and, and fight and prove that you're innocent. Natural thing to do, and they take full advantage of it because they don't have any jurisdiction. And the one thing you should not be doing is addressing the quote-unquote merits of the case. That's a general appearance, and it gives the court jurisdiction. But it gets worse. Even if you go in there and know a little something and want to try to challenge the jurisdiction of the court, which in earlier times you were able to do back when we had states and common law courts, you can't do it nowadays. <clears throat> because what happens is you find out there's no remedies, and as the clerk of court in denying my petition for non-statutory writ of habeas corpus said that the questions raised in the petition are beyond the jurisdiction of California courts since they appear to raise federal questions. Never mind that that jurisdiction has been in state courts for 225 years, which just makes my case state versus territory. What we have here are territories, not states. But a little, little example of what you run into is you go in there, and I've got a case uh, called Ernest M. Millican, M-I-L-L-I-C-A-N, versus United States, 600 Federal 2nd, 273. Don't remember which Court of Appeals, but all of them are going to do the same thing. And Millican goes in there with a, a, a tax crime trial, and he goes in there and he properly challenges jurisdiction. He demands a probable cause hearing at which I believe the government would have had to prove, among other things, that he's a quote-unquote taxpayer, quote-unquote person, quote-unquote employee, etc., and the court denies it. Well, what he does, I'm not sure with or without an attorney, probably with one, is he ends up going in there and going to trial anyway and addressing the merits. He got convicted. He goes up to the Court of Appeals, having preserved this argument supposedly for the right to appeal, and the circuit court, in affirming his conviction, said that it was true that, in effect, Milliken did everything he could do in order to get a probable cause hearing. He should have had one. But when he appeared at the trial, rather than forcing his arrest by warrant, he waived the right. Therefore, we affirm his conviction. That tells you more plainly than anything I can say. You can't go in and challenge these bastards in these territorial tribunals. It's beyond their jurisdiction for openers. And if you attempt to do it, uh, they're going to summarily dismiss it without telling you that little fact of life. But you also can't go in and address the merits of the case. Because that's not how we can do it either. So there's basically no remedy here. There are much better arguments to be making about that particular situation. You're going to hear about them a little later among, among these arguments is that whatever the statute's involved, it's a bill of attainder, the taking of property without judicial process. That beats them across the board in situations like this, and we'll get to that more in future videos. Thank you.